get into the code, in what generation is the object on the stack? And the answer is, it's in generation two. Why is that? The answer is probably, because I'm not 100% sure, is because that generations are like determined based on the addresses. If the address does not fit, in, does not fit into generation zero or one, it is assumed to be in generation two. Because our stack is in, well, technically none of those generations, it is by accident in generation two, but this is like, I'm guessing this, I'm not 100% sure. Finally, what we are going to do is we want to take logs on this object, so we can see that yes, we are taking logs, acquiring them, releasing as expected, and finally, one thing which we are not doing, we can register our object on the stack for finalization, so it's released by the garbage collector, and uh, the thing I am not, the reason why I am not doing this is because sometimes it crashes. And that's because, well, this is not something you probably would like to do. Let's verify right now if it crashes. And you know, this time it worked. So you can see that we had a finalizer method in our instance, which is just this uh, printing out the, the field value. And as you can see, this time it worked. However, this is not like reliable. This does not need to work every single time. Question, yes. Yeah. How it works with garbage collector? You just did some emulation on the point. So what if instead of just doing this last thing you did, you just call to see collect? I, I'm just wondering, loop, you see collect the loop, you see the compute at all? This is a very valid question. And the question is, what happens in how does GC behave in like terms of handling this object? So first thing, if we would ever be doing this on production, we probably need to pin the object, yes? So it's not moved by the garbage collector in any case. Yes, this is first thing. Second thing, will garbage collector clean up this object or will it crash when handling this object? It will handle it gracefully, handle it correctly. Why? Because garbage collector just goes through the graph of the objects, through the references, and just marks the space, the memory addresses, as occupied. It does not take care of memory which it cannot reach. So if it can reach this thing, and it sees that, hey, this object is still being used because I have reference to it, the thing the garbage collector might try to do is just copy it to some other generation. And here, if we pin the object, it should not be the case, it should. What if we exit the map? If we exit the map, well, we exit it and it did not crash, as you can see. Because it's on stack, so when you exit the map, all of that. Yeah, all the stack is cleaned up, and .NET uh, process is aware of this memory, because we allocated the array of integers and copied the object into this array. So there is nothing like we allocated some more of the stack memory. We just reused the memory yeah. that was there. Because the reference actually died when we exited. Exited. So the memory died, it was cleaned up, and the if we would return this reference here, this is like the best way to crash your process. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't recommend this. Well, because if we would re uh, return this uh, reference and clean up the stack frame, this memory would be like uh, not used anymore. It would not be on the stack technically because the stack would be like without the stack frame. Yes. So if you would try to read this memory using this reference, 99% it would crash. The same as in C++. If you return like a pointer to the object on the stack, it will crash when you Yeah, but essentially not even the term, but say it's somewhere. So essentially, you want to care. As long, as long as this stack frame is on the stack, it should work correctly without any problems. Of course, assuming that you also pin this object, which I am not doing here because of the demo process. Yes, another question. Heap <coughs> versus stack, um, stack grows linearly. Where does the zero grow from? How does it compete with the heap in the frameworks? Okay. It's like not that uh, related to the .NET framework. It's more operating system stuff. So every thread in Windows, uh, like by default, has a one megabyte of stack of a stack. 
which grows like the addresses go down. They increase when you allocate more memory on the stack. Yes, keep this somewhere completely in some different place. If you allocate some memory on the on the heap, it's actually .NET Framework is going to the operating system with Cisco and saying, hey, I need some new block of memory. Operating system typically allocates something like four kilobytes and just gives this memory to the CLR, yes? With, do, with stack, the way it behaves is whenever you need to your stack to, to grow, it does similar thing, it just gets another page in this linear stack, yes? So it needs to be after your previous page, uh, so you can like operate linearly on this. And when you hit the limit, the way it behaves is there is a protected memory, if you try to read from it, your operating system is notified by the memory management unit in CPU, saying, hey, this should not be done, you might consider not doing this, and the Stack Overflow is from it. Another question, yes? Maybe a question that I don't understand very well. Sure. RDDI is also an object, right? And that can be, is there any possibility that that object itself can be moved by the RTTI in the object is just a pointer. Yeah. It points to metadata, which is some .NET internal structures. They should not be moved ever because they are not allocated on a garbage collected uh, heap. Yes, this is memory, native memory allocated by .NET Framework. If you would go with like uh, tools like virtual mem, I think it's called, it can show you that your .NET application has something like a GC memory, but also native memory. And those structures are on the native memory. Cool, there was another question. Yes. Uh, can uh, any file process outside of this process read this memory and take an advantage of it possibly with the miners? Uh, yes, if you would like to read process, uh, memory of different process, you can do it assuming you have permissions. There is an API called, uh, like Win API, which you can use to read process from memory from different process. You can also allocate memory in different process. You can also create a thread in different process. And this is like pretty often used if you would like to do DLL injection. If you would like to inject DLL into other process, you first allocate some memory and then create a thread to actually load your DLL into some stuff. So how can we write a code which can prevent this kind of malfunction in the case? You would like to prevent other processes from reading your memory. Uh, the thing you can do here is you need to ask operating system to like remove uh, like permissions from other processes. So either you run this as a different user or you run this in some sandbox and environment. Like, it does not work like out of the box. You cannot do it just like that. Because at the end of the day, this is like a very legitimate use case. So if you have like admin permissions, you can always do this. Well, 99% <coughs> always because there are, there are some DRM stuff which you cannot do. Another question, yes? Yes, um, so I'm concerned about this working on the list build because the virtual calls of the stream might be somehow online or something like that. Uh, so I'm just not convinced so that uh, it could be used as a technique. And yeah, yeah, I know that uh, if you just can uh, change it to release, maybe and run it for people, so it will still like turn from optimizations. But uh, just just by judging how like the optimizations are done and generally in uh, like very low level compilers for high optimization, they would uh, uh, mine some stuff. And uh, they, for example, they would they would assume that the objects are equal because the code originally started with the pointer to the same object. And then sort of do a optimization, basically call the original object all the time when you call your virtual methods. Got it. Uh, if you would use this, this this reference in your code, it might be the case. I'm not like I would not try to guess, but I imagine this might be a case that the, something was optimized so that the your application behaves in the unexpected way. But if you use this ref value. I believe it should work in release as well. I have other demos running in release mode and they work correctly. I believe this demo should work as well in release uh, without any problems. So I presume if you just use rev value here, it should be should be good. Should, should the, the unsafe block given into the compiler that should, should not trust, should not rely on? This is another valid, valid case here. In unsafe block, optimizations might be like disabled. I'm not that like, I don't know all the quirks in the unsafe blocks, so yeah, but this is, sounds like a valid thing. 
So in your example, if you copy the same in the RGCI and the field. Yes. If you copy just the field, would the field references would still work later on? Okay. And then the RCTI that allowed you to call methods and hit type. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then the sync one allowed you to do the lock. Is it is that straightforward? Yes, okay. that's correct. Without copying the sync block, uh, the locking might fail. Without copying the type, actually this method probably would still work uh, because it's not bound in the runtime, uh, because it's not virtual. This, not this, uh, where is it? This, uh, this should one fail one. Yeah. and get type 99% it will okay, fail. So no yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? So what exactly did we gain? Understand? Mm. The trick works. We have object on the heap. I presume the story is that it's somehow now faster, more optimal. What we gained here, apart from like the understanding of internal details, we gained nothing. But we know how to allocate object anywhere in the memory. And in second demo, we'll utilize this to verify whether we can implement cost container which uh, with better performance than least of the. So just wait a second to see that we can actually gain some performance. Okay, I can see no more questions. So let's carry on. So this was the demo one, manage object on a stack. And like the side effect of allocating the object on the stack is we should realize that we can actually allocate the object anywhere in the memory because I can take any of the addresses and allocate the object there. Yes, so what I'm going to do is we can experiment with some unsafe list, which will behave a little differently than the generic list provided by standard.net library. This is a list of the implementation, which in C++ nomenclature would be something like vector of pointers to the object. The thing is, when we add something to this list, and I'm considering here only list of the where T is a reference type, we are not storing the whole object in the list. We are just storing the reference to the object, yes? So if we, add a, if we copy a lot of objects to the list and then we would like to iterate over them, we would do some ping pong, yes? Go to the reference, go to the object, go to the another reference, object, reference, object, etc. We will jump through the memory all the time, constantly. What we are going to do is we'll implement a list which copies the object to its count itself. So then, in theory, allocation, like addition to the list should be slower because instead of copying just one pointer, we need to copy like the whole big object. And, but iterating over the objects could be in theory faster because we can uh, get some performance benefits because of going through the cache lines in the nice and predictable order so the prefetcher can like read the memory faster, etc. This is the idea. So now let's implement this stuff. Uh, okay, what we are going to do is we will have this POCA class, this time with a little more integers. So it's 16 integers, 32-bit architecture, so it's something like 64 bytes just for the integers, plus two bytes for sync block and uh, RTTI information. And what we are going to do is we will run three tests for each of the collections, which is for just an array, uh, for the list of t provided by .NET Framework, and for our unsafe list, yes? I will just run this application so it can uh, like calculate the results in the background. And you can see it working here. And now let's go through the code. What we do in all of those tests, we just create new instance, uh, assign some values to the field, uh, this i changes in every iteration, so the objects should be different. And when we are testing, we do exactly the same things. First, we create stopwatch to measure the time of adding something to the array, so we put the object in this array, and we print the insertion time. Then we restart stopwatch, iterate through the, uh, over the objects, and just sum all of those integers, and print the result with the time, yes? This is just to verify that all those collections, they gave exactly the same result. We do this for array, we do this for a list of t, which is also like pre-allocated. It has the specified size, so it does not need to reallocate 
uh, its size during the, the test. And we do exactly the same thing with our unsafe list. If we go to unsafe list implementation, this is like pretty uh, predictable what is happening. We have a big array of integers where we can store our objects. Uh, we need to know the element size. We can calculate this in runtime. We'll do it in demo free. Here I just provided statically. So we allocate some, some memory and also we have like a helper reference which will be constantly modifying to pre-calculate references to the objects. Then we do the magic. Just copy the object, copy all the integers, store them in the array, recalculate the reference. Uh, well, this code is probably unreadable right now in the space, but this is exactly the same what we were doing in demo one. Okay, before we get to the results, please think for a while what are like the expected values. What should be the fastest collection in terms of addition and in terms of iteration over the, the, the item? And the results are, assuming that uh, they work correctly because I'm presenting, so sometimes it can change the results. As you can see, for array insertion time is something like four and a half seconds, and calculation time is something like 140 milliseconds. Yes, uh, of course this benchmark is by no means reliable. I mean, do not consider this a, like a proper benchmark. Yes, I'm just running this three times, so everything can uh, change the results here. Uh, but just to give you like some idea of what the value might be. For least we have like similar performance when it uh, comes to adding the items, and the similar for uh, iterating over the items. Why? Because the list underneath just stores the items in the, in the array. So it should be exactly the same. However, when we get to the unsaved list, this is something more interesting. As you can see, insertion time, instead of almost five seconds, is something like two seconds now. However, the iteration time is exactly the same, the same order. So, when I was telling you about reading all those cache lines, etc., uh, to like gain some performance benefits, those were my expectations when I was writing this demo, when I was trying to implement this. Why? Because first, uh, well, I seen similar demo in JVM and it worked like this, and also it sounded pretty reasonable. Yeah, that iteration should be faster, and definitely the adding elements to the to the unsafe list should be a little slower because we need to copy a lot more parts. As you can see, this is not the case here. We are just copying the objects to the unsafe list, and it is much faster than adding them to like adding references to the array or to the list of T. Even though, if you get to the code like to all of its internals, you can see that I am doing exactly the same thing as this first test does. I mean, first I copy the object to the list, but then I pre-calculate the reference to this copied object and store it in some array of references as well. And yet, even though I do the same as in the first test, and even more because I need to copy this big, those big objects, this is still faster. So, those are performance benefits which we, well, we might get actually when playing with raw memory, and which might be like quite unexpected before we actually benchmark them. That's why you always should benchmark your code and do not rely on assumptions or like the idea which sounds reasonable because the, the, the results <coughs> might be a little like surprising. Any questions to this demo? The underscore elements, you said that's an array of references? Uh, yes. Okay. As you can see, it's of type Q, so it's references. So this is the storage for objects. Okay, so if you, if you think of all your objects sitting in an array, if there's an array of byte, it would be the size of your object times the number of uh, instances. Right. I, just, I don't remember how many you had. But. Okay, um, this is here. Yeah, so if you were iterating without using an array of References, you would just be doing pointing. So, why were you doing the array of references in this demo as opposed to just popping along in? If it was just 
one guy in the brain. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The question is, why do I pre-calculate the references instead of just doing the pointer mathematics every single time when I access the element? And the answer is, I don't remember the rationale, but I found it's interesting enough to do it this way. I could do it, I could calculate the address every single time. Yeah, it should work as well. But in memory, it is one giant continuous block. Yes, in memory, this is like the whole yeah. big array. And when we add the object, you can see, where is it? It's current index, which we like increase every single time when we add the, when we add the, the object. Okay, so really just potential optimization, maybe array and pointer. You should benchmark this. Yeah. <laughs> cool, any other questions? Yes. So why is this faster? <laughs> why is this faster? <laughs> well, this is the native code for adding the objects to the array using store element rest instruction underneath. What I I don't know the answer why this is faster. That's why I'm including this demo because it's very surprising and I don't know the answer. Can I explain this? Why is this faster? Uh, I would believe there might be some another checks just for the like a safety checks whether you are trying to add the correct object to the array etc but since we are doing exactly the same for unsafe list it is probably compiled to some different code yeah because i'm going with generics for unsafe list and without generics just for the array yes it's just the array so there might be some different code underneath but i don't know the answer feel free like to debug this on your own and write on Brenda. Any other questions? Cool. Uh, so let's carry on. Uh, I'll allocator. In first demo, we cheated a little. We just copied 